Hello everybody, welcome back to the DDMM YouTube channel for another Club 100 vlog. Uh, hopefully this one works. Hopefully you're watching this and this is going to be a nice, good, uh, comprehensive vlog. The last couple of rounds have been a bit of a mess. Reviewed the season so far, this is round four today, so three rounds we've uh, competed in so far. Uh, decent results for us in our first full season in the Clubman class. Uh, a couple of top tens, um, actually no, they've all been top tens, uh, a couple of uh, top sixes, that's what I should have said. Um, so it's, it's been a steady start, although I don't think we've really at, at any point so far in the three races you know, hit our kind of 2019 levels of um, efficient performance in the pit stops. Round four of the championship today, uh, this is the bit of the calendar that's got a bit higgledy piggledy and it's been in, out, in, out, more times this country's been in lockdown uh, but it, we are really glad to see the return of Bookmore Park to racing in Club 100 uh, it, it has been quite a while since we've been down to Bookmore Park um, I think the last time that we were there was probably the August E60 round last year where we had the whole head incident um, but yeah great to have it back was a little bit concerned last week when we had that scorcher of a round at Lid that, oh no, is it going to be really, really hot again for a Bookmore Park round, which of course we've had some challenges with in the past. But it's quite grey. Uh, summer has ended, it would seem, and we're back to what feels more like September, October uh, than the middle of the summer months. So it is a little bit damp. Rain is due to hold off for the course of the morning, but I think it's going to be a bit greasy out there for the first initial run out and circuit. Usual team for us today, the three of us. Uh, this I think will be my last appearance for a bit because I go off doing many commentary things uh, if the plan doesn't change for the next couple of rounds. Uh, so we'll have, as I say, even more reason to have, try and have a good race today with that in mind. It's going to be a while until I'm back in the car. But enough talking, let's get on with it now, let's get to the circuit and see the return of Club 100 racing, in fact any racing of any description at all, to Bookmore Park. Let's get on. Track. Uh, just waiting for practice to begin. How it's going to go out first for us in this practice session. Uh, it's mostly dry, a couple of damp spots and a puddle here or there. Track I reckon is going to be very, very green because it's the first of anything to properly run uh, this year. So I've just said to Howard how it's probably going to be worse track grip conditions than a BUKC round. So um, we'll see how he does. Everything's relatively calm this morning, which is weird. Which probably means it's all going to go wrong in a bit. Getting on board then for the practice, or the back end of the practice, and then into the qualifying session. Wardy going in for us. This is our usual strategy when we're not at Wilton Mill. Uh, James Dixon just ahead of us there, heading out on circuit for JK Rowling. And everyone. This was a theme throughout the whole day. Very calm, which is good to see. We get some fuel this time. Uh, long story short, we may have forgotten to do that at Wilton Mill. We got a little bit confused with our, our clocks and stuff. But out onto circuit goes Wardy for the first time in far too long here at Bookmore Park. So good to have it back. Uh, this isn't going to be a track guide, but I thought we'd just kick things off with uh, an ode to Bookmore Park and why it is the same as Howard, uh, my favourite circuit. So you head across the top end of the circuit is all about commitment into the corners I find uh, especially the big braking zones of hairpins 1 and hairpins 2 these I find suit me quite well uh, I've always liked driving around here it's one of the first places I've actually raced in these Club 100 carts back in the BUKC days as you come through the sweeping chicane there you go into a very very different bit of the circuit down some sweep which I still think is one of the best uh, complexes of corners in the country into a, into a more technical area still with uh, all of its challenges and some good opportunities to overtake 
Atlas Wardy completes his first lap, or his out lap, during this practice session. Let's join him for the qualifying lap, which is his final lap of the session. So this was right at the death. Heading into turn one and turn two, nice clean lines through there. As we say, can we clip the apex for hairpin number one? That's pretty good. Little bit of uh, bogging down off of hairpin one. We're keeping the speed up there. Wardy takes a slightly wider line uh, than myself through hairpin two, but he's got good speed through the chicane. Someone's already bailed out of qualifying. They're not happy with something. Down through Syme, so easy to overcommit down through here. But that's pretty good as well. A little bit wide through Paddock. Um, it's not too bad. This, I think, is the, the trickiest corner on the circuit, but Wardy's dealt with that very well. And now it's just foot to the floor, especially in these conditions, up to the line. And uh, this lap time was less than a second away from pole position, but put us 26th on the grid. It's a crazily close qualifying. Uh, Wardy wasn't too happy about it, as we're about to hear on the GoPro. This is not a happy driver. Qualifying report, it's mad close, hella close. It's very close. Um, so we're starting in the second half again, but we'll do our usual, try and get in early, try and make up some positions early on. Uh, track is pretty much dry. It's very un I know they're just joining the back of the queue. It's very unnerving when you're stood on the track and you hear a car engine going that high pitch. It's like, what? But it's fine, they're just recovering to the back of the field. So, um, yeah, we'll give it a good go. I think everyone's quite enjoying today. He's coming. He's coming. He's going to park behind us. Um, everyone's quite buoyant today, I think, being back here. Yeah, I love being back here. I, it's great to be back here. Um, it's it's still my favourite track. Yeah. And, yeah, it feels like a bit of a milestone yeah. of the 18 months that have been to be back here racing. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, we're probably going to cut now and hopefully not balls up the GoPro today and uh, cut to the start of the race. Let's have it. Seven and a half tenths of a second cover the top 28 in that qualifying session. We were six tenths down. Uh, then a couple of drivers decided to change carts, so we actually line up for the start of the race, 24th on the grid and with work to do in our Clubman class. Uh, Andrew Ward in for the start of the race as usual. Away we go then for the first time in nearly a year. Two hours around Buckmore Park. What can we do into turn one? It's already getting a little bit pushy. Uh, the guy in the red suit's gone absolutely flying around the outside. Made that work for him and it's all a little bit bargy down into hairpin one. I don't think I've ever seen a start not be bargy down into hairpin one. It's all about survival at the moment. Same for hairpin two. Uh, but here you see one of the crucial things with hairpin two, you can use the outside line to get a bit of a slingshot. Uh, Wardy has lost a couple of positions, Alex Pritchard is in the lead of the race for Team Applewood ahead of Matt Wildman. We're all piling down now into the lower part of the circuit, jostling around, still as ever back on board with Wardy. There's going to be an opportunity here surely to get up the inside of at least one of the drivers. There he goes on the brakes, just short of running into the back of uh, lucid initiatives there we've gained a position back but here's the problem with a bit, bit of a, a lowly qualifying we're already losing times to some of those clubman carts further up the road big sky racing just ahead of us then at the end of lap one we're going to be doing around about 150 laps in this race and still plenty of time to make up these positions grizzly racing and lucid initiatives going side by side with three wide going into hairpin two on lap number two that's good positioning though from wardy gets up the inside of grizzly racing there's a little bit of work to do off of hairpin two and has gained another position uh, ahead of big sky racing apologies uh, to get us up to 26th already thinking about the pit stop then Two minutes is the point at which the uh, the window opens, and especially as Grizzly Racing were having some trouble, especially around the top end of the circuit, holding Wardy up a bit. Uh, Lucid Initiatives and SMJK Racing just ahead as well. But another problem with when you qualify a little bit lower down, it's harder to get your driver in uh, earlier in the race. There's only two fuel bowsers, remember, so if two drivers have jumped in ahead of you, say first, uh, first and third, there's nothing much he can do, so we have to wait till lap five to get Wardy in. Now, it's crucial to get a really nice, clean stop at these early stages. We'll be looking at the long game here to gain some positions as other drivers stop 
get Wardy in some clean air. There's also a bit of water down in the pit lane as well, which makes the entry to the fuel bowser uh, a tiny, tiny bit tricky, but Wardy's dealt with that pretty well. And he's back in the cart. That's one stop out of five completed. And uh, the general feeling on that one, that, that was a, a decent start to the race from where we were. First stop with you, Mr Mitchell. We're pretty happy with that, aren't we? Yeah, very happy with that. Um, yeah, timing on that was good. Timing of stops is difficult a bit more because of, uh, well, it's on two levels, the circuit. So the driver has no visibility of the pits and you have no visibility of the driver. So all things considered, really happy with that. Yeah, so we've already started jumping positions, playing the long game. Let's see where we are in, uh, at the end of this first round stop. Lap seven, here's a crucial point. I see, I'm saying crucial a lot today. There, you just had a quick sight of James Johnston from the three Swans team, uh, the Swans University graduates. They were a good way up the order compared to us early on. Uh, so this was working initially uh, and going through the course of this first stint. And as we join us on lap 17, we've actually got up to 21st position. We're on the outskirts of the top 20, having been down in... Uh, 26th, 27th place. Uh, James is just behind us as well, working together pretty nicely at this stage of proceedings. We come across another BUKC person, a Binfield, formerly of Warwick. Good opportunistic driving from Wardy again there. Down the inside gets 20th position off of Lucid Initiatives. Uh, not only is that good for a position overall, it's also for one in class as well. So that was a really, really nice move. It's something you can do a lot of into Hairpin 2. It's not a last time I should say we'll see a move into Hairpin 2. Wardy's on the charge here I think he was a bit riled but he's got up the inside of Binfield there that's 19th position JJ's also followed us through at this point and uh, that's the three swans up to 20th then we come up behind Brilio who were having a little bit of a strange early stage of this race one of those carts that were just really hard to overtake and that gave JJ the opportunity to go down the inside. He did exactly the same move to me in the E60 race here last year. He does like that move down uh, into the hairpin. But this wasn't too much of a problem because it is JJ's local track. So the instruction to Wardy at this stage was just stick on JJ's rear bumper if you can. He will be quick. He will go for moves. He will send it and uh, will part the seas for us, as it were running through the order at this stage of the race as well. Very tight at the front, JLG Racing and JK Rowling had had good starts in our class as well. Yellow flags out for some cone replacement that regularly happens on that corner. Carson getting his steps in for the day. Lap number 22, still the situation this time the three swans down the inside, that's maybe going to offer an opportunity for Wardy to get past Brilio. No, not quite. Wardy was having a couple of troubles, I think, with the cards in terms of low end. He uh, didn't feel fully in tune with it, which I think was affecting him a little bit off hairpin too. And this phase of the race got quite difficult in a way, because it's, it's something that often happens around Bookmore Park. if. A train of carts see you as someone who's overtakeable. Ryan Sandal doing just that for slick speed uh, into the hairpin. You kind of get a little bit ganged up on, and that was definitely the case for Wardy in this stage of the race. As I say, I sympathise with him. I had exactly the same thing at the E60 race last season. We also had traffic starting to come into play at this stage of the race as well. And the back marker just holding Wardy outside there. That was a really, really unlucky spot to be in. That allowed 11th hour racing through uh, into that position. Wardy fought back though, this was good to see. Back up the inside into Garda, gets the position back, back into 17th place. But look how much time we've lost to Brilio ahead in 16th. And uh, 11th hour racing weren't done there, came back down the inside into hairpin one. There was a lot going on in this early stage of the race. Wardy fights, but this was a really, really good battle. Uh, not quite sure if that was a legal overtake outside track limits. This was, though. What a move from Richard Allen round the outside into Swine, Symes. I know it's overtaking our car, but I had to leave that in. That was an absolutely brilliant move uh, for the speed screen team there. Gets them up to 18th place. Brilio started coming back towards, though. Here we are on lap 32. So about, what, 60% of the way through 
Wardy's opening stint of the race and we definitely had more speed than them as the CKS throat punchers who uh, were having a weird day themselves they were coming back through the field overtook us but then well I'm not even sure what, quite what happened there but it resulted in us gaining two positions Brilio making a mistake into hairpin one and the poor CKS throat punchers getting involved in it as well uh, really really unlucky and they actually pulled off the circuit for a bit I think they, they went for a bit of a, uh, a cup of tea a breather and came back out on circuit but that, that pretty much put pay to their race especially them being a Prem's team 49 laps for Mr Andrew Ward completed and that was the end of the first stint we join the cart again on lap 70 having done a GoPro battery change change of strategy on the GoPros today so this is me going into the second part of my race story of the race uh, well, in terms of the 20 laps or so that we've missed uh, big battle with slick speed I think it was over the course of those 20 laps and that was really starting to be uh, the story of this phase of the race uh, they changed driver as well so we're hanging around the top 20 again uh, the first in I have to say in in an overall was a good one we pulled ourselves back into a decent position to get some good points uh, and it dropped a good number of the carts behind us as well and we come out here just behind JK Rowling as well who of course we know very very well on the channel here uh, competed with us in the Inters Championship in 2019 and it's Carl in the cart as well I think they run a similar strategy to us in terms of uh, when they put their drivers out and uh, the mission similar to Clay Pigeon really was just try and stay on Carl's rear bumper and work with him at this stage JK Rowling were a lap ahead of us as well we're not really fighting for position we're into the top 20 now lap 73 pretty much at the halfway stage of the race but just to say we're in the top 20 we drop out of it again Bailey Morgan who's absolutely brilliant around this circuit gets past uh, gives me gives me another little bit of a flashback to the E60 race last year uh, so he's got ahead of us now lap 80 the, the job of staying with JK Rowling was working pretty well at this point we've got some traffic to deal with uh, now ahead fake David Coulthard I'm going to call him simply because he's got the, the cross of St Andrews on his head I, mean, I know that's imaginative but there we go we're going to see a three wide here into uh, hairpin one it all gets a little bit pinball in there uh, and we are going to nip up the inside and get one of those back markers this isn't for position at the, this precise moment but still very very crucial again I'll use the crucial word again to get through and uh, not lose too much time as we say we're just pacing ourselves against JK Rowling through the middle phase of this race uh, I forget the name of driver ahead I do apologize because it is a, it is a helmet that I recognize from Club 100 meetings uh, over the years but a little bit tricky to overtake just had to pick the moment but we went for a hairpin 2 one down the inside easiest place on the Club 100 calendar to overtake hairpin number two uh, Nicky Richardson gives you that one for free have a watch of his video of getting past uh, Willie Chew through that corner. Once you've watched it, you'll be dive bombing everybody into that corner. We move a few laps on and uh, we catch this guy in the Tiger helmet. And I think this is for position. We go for it again down the inside into hairpin number two. Thank you very much, Mr. Richardson, for your tuition. That's another position. And we're starting to climb higher into the top 20 now and catching slick speed as well. We'd worked that gap back to slick speed after being a little bit off in terms of strategy so I was pretty pretty pleased at this point we just saw uh, slick speed dive in there for their uh, third pit stop as it was at this stage of the race going quite long in this phase of the race as well which gained us a couple of positions uh, at this precise time Mike Coppin goes past there uh, lapping us, I think that was for the second time gives us a thumbs up, Team Applewood having a storming day here at Bookmore Park leading the race at this stage uh, of proceedings, good teamwork though I felt here between myself and Howard on the comms, no it won't have been Howard on the comms at this stage because he's about to get in, Wardy was on the comms but uh, we called this one spot on because that back marker was going to hold us up we dive in want to get that pit entry nice and safe we do so I'm gonna hand over the cart to Howard for the final 40 minutes of this race and he is ready summary uh, best thing for the year so far 
Uh, the temperatures definitely helped. I've just put myself on the weighing scales. Last week I lost 0.9 of a kilo in my stint. Today it was 0.1. Far more manageable. Pace felt good. Uh, pulled off some moves. Didn't have any incidents. Got one track limit warning. It's pretty much as good as, as you can get. Uh, we're looking at another top six in the class. Howard's out now. Let's hope we can uh, bring it to the end. Indeed. So Howard goes out for his final stint. Loses a little bit of time there. I think that was CK's throat punches again. Uh, as I say, he had gone back into the race at this point, but was some 15 laps or so uh, down to the... Just gone into a bit of a glorified test session. But the situation with 40 minutes to go is we are P17. And we're in this region with auditing Armageddon and Red Hot Racing. Red Hot Racing closing in uh, at the moment. There they go. Steve Moody at the wheel for them. Very quick driver around this circuit. Won the E60 race here in August last year. The last time Club 100 visited uh, Bookmore Park. Now we often say with Howard Stintz that we send him out there and all chaos ensues. Complete opposite here at Bookmore Park. Oh, there's another hairpin to move for you for free. Uh, this was really good for Howard because it just let him get on the pace. We mentioned that Clay Pigeon, his pace has really, really improved uh, over the off-season with the weight loss. Uh, so this was absolutely what Howard wanted. Nice, clean, early stint to get into the rhythm and not lose too much time. Intriguing point of the race, this. All Talk Racing have just completed their last pit stop. That's them directly ahead. So we know we're not really racing them at this stage because we've still got to do our fifth pit stop. Uh, but it's Charlie Purr in for them. Another driver who's normally quite quick round here. And uh, I said to Howard on the radio, how do you feel your pace is relative to him? It, is he holding you up? And Howard came back and said yes. So we try and get Howard in as quickly as possible. It, it's still very, very tricky. You've got to be safe with the pit stops around here. You can't risk uh, two carts being in the pit lane and calling your driver in, hoping one of them or two of them have cleared in the meantime, because you can miss carts in that middle transition. But we've called this pretty spot on. That's a great stop into the box by Howard. He does like them round Buckwell Park and has got us away, got the last pit stop done and we're in 18th place. So we're pretty sure that we've got the top 20 secured at this stage of the race. Now we're just trying to fight for a couple of scraps at the end of the two hour endurance. We catch Conman racing here, who we weren't racing. I'm not sure if Conman were on like a last warning or something because they were a little bit timid, uh, which is unusual for them. Hence that little moment through hairpin number two. Peter O'Connor's come flying through as well. Eventually, Conman do get past this similarly looking back marker. With 15 laps to go. Still a potential of another position, should someone fall off or have a penalty. And I love to see these kind of moves from Howard. Down the inside, into Garda. Really, really going for it. As I say, I think he's our star of the season so far considering uh, where he's come from in terms, in terms of 2020 and 2019. Applewood give us another little, little wave there. Chris Alcock coming by. In a way, quite a nice thing to have happen, have the leader go by, because you know where you're going to be in terms of checkered flag coming out. Things get a little bit fraught at the end here, though. Uh, one of the leaders comes down the inside. Not sure what happened to Conman and the driver in the orange helmet there, but Howard picks his way through very nicely. And I think at this stage, we just clocked that it was getting a little bit fraught out there. Lots of other drivers uh, pushing for positions. We didn't really have anything to race for. We were 15 seconds behind the cart in front, 15 seconds behind ahead of the cart behind. So in the end, we kind of just called a truce, got the cart to the end. 150 laps completed by ourselves, three laps off the lead, and a really solid finish. It, I think it was eighth in class in the end, which isn't our best class position of the year so far but in terms of overall and where we were relative to the leaders uh, in this particular race team apple were taking their first victory of the season we were pretty happy with this result we felt it was the best team performance of the season so far uh, the pit stops went cleanly which we've not had so far this season and uh, all of our pace was relatively even across the course of the day and serves us well into the rest of the season next race being at Rye House on the 10th of July. 
One final point of order in this race was a weigh-in. Howard has not lost too much weight, so we're all good on that front. That brings us to the end of the video. If you have enjoyed watching it, do make sure you've clicked that like button. If you want to see more content here on the DDMM YouTube channel, do make sure you've subscribed and click the notification bell. Do take care, do have a very, very good day, and we'll see you for more action here on Double Dash Red Sport Media YouTube channel.